the, the ultimate question and what you're probably thinking yourself is how do you make this work? How do you bring people to your site? How do you, uh, how do you bring people to your eBay? And the ultimate answer to that is content. As you can see, just check out this beautiful, gorgeous toning on the coin. Wow. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, we ended up almost spending $9,000 uh, at one of our clients' houses today, or one of a, a good friend of ours. Uh, bought a whole bunch of Raw Morgan dollars, American Silver Eagles, uh, silver bars, silver rounds, uh, you know, nice, nice holdered stuff, Walking Liberty half dollars, uh, Morgan dollars. Uh, what else did we buy? Key day quarters. Uh, we also bought a lot of nice type stuff, but I think the coolest coin from all of this is this 1805 quarter. Uh, it's got some nice toning on it. Um, you just don't see these every day. It is graded by Anex, which isn't the best, but they do authenticate the coin, uh, which is something that you need done irregardless if you find a nice coin like this and you don't want to spend too much money. But uh, we're wrapping up, like I said, at our friend's house, and uh, we're going to take these home, uh, show you guys everything that we got, and we're, you guys uh, enjoy the video, and uh, stay tuned for our whiteboard session. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Wow, wow, wow. Just got back from our friend's house. He hooked us up. Like, I don't know what else to say to you guys. It's, it's, it's been a crazy day. Um, but let me show you guys exactly what we got. First, uh, we're going to be coming out swinging some punches with an awesome coin. This is an 1805 uh, Drape Bus Quarter. Graded uh, Fine 12 by ANX. And as you can see, just check out this beautiful, gorgeous toning on the coin. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This coin made me stop and stare, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I love the coin because of that. Um, and when you flip over the coin as well, you can actually zoom in and see some extra toning on it, kind of like a zebra toning. And you can also see, which I love about the coin, is the 25 and then the C on uh, separate sides of the eagle. Just something that's phenomenal about it. I think that's a really interesting part of the coin. Love the cloud feature as well. I mean, just oh, this coin is probably one of my favorites of the per of the whole entire lot. Um, but if you guys are interested in any of these coins, our, our website is in the description. You guys will be able to take a crack at, at most of these coins. Some have already sold because people uh, want them and uh, have been buying them off our website. So you guys got to check in constantly and you'll find some stuff like this. Here is uh, a 1920S uh, Standing Liberty Quarter, graded AU55 by uh, ANX. And the reason why I bought this coin is because it's just a very flashy piece. Um, I think uh, the coin was a little bit undergraded by them, but that's okay. You can kind of see this haziness and a bit of circulation on the reverse of the coin here underneath the eagle. Uh, and, but the reason why I bought, I'm buying these and the reason why we're talking about all this stuff today is because I am personally expanding on all the inventory that we get in. So when we, when we start to buy stuff, we're going to be buying everything and um, doing our best due diligence in terms of its rarity. Um, finding it the, uh, for the best price for you guys because that's what's important um, And so we're buying standing Liberty cords. You're gonna see everything in this video, but um, it, It's just uh, it's just something that we're trying to do um, the more capital that we get the more things that we want to provide in terms of variety and in terms of uh, Price range. I know some of you guys like to buy the bigger coins and some guys just want to fill in some slots for the their uh, their albums So we're here for everybody um, feel free to message us anytime on our website um, because we will be uh, responding to those and we respond to your comments. What are you guys thinking of these coins so far? Uh, we're excited to hear from you. This is an 1836 cap bust uh, half dollar 
uh, great AU55 details by uh, Annex. The coin overall, I like. It has a scratch to the right of the coin, which um, is the reason why we're not asking a whole lot for this coin. But I do like the originality of the coin. I like that uh, you know it wasn't over dipped or tried to someone tried to mess with it in terms of cleaning. Um, I just think it's a nice original half that I that I wanted to pick up. I normally don't buy these, but um, I do enjoy the coin overall. I think that there's a whole lot um, to learn about cat busts and how they're graded, and so um, this is something that I'm going to take a look at while the video is not rolling, just so I can understand and conceptualize the grade that they gave it. Hey guys, this is Drew, and in this whiteboard session we're talking about reinventing the coin wheel, and basically what that means is we're talking about what dealers are doing differently now uh, that online coin sales have been uh, increasing this past year and a half since uh, the start of the pandemic. Um, but what, before I get started, we normally talk about uh, different coin cycles that you find yourself in, um, either on Facebook, Instagram, or if you're dealing with a website or eBay. Um, and just to let you guys know, before we start, understand that using Facebook or Instagram to sell coins is not necessarily a bad thing. It really all depends on where you are as a coin dealer and how many uh, items that you're offering. Um, the problem that we ran into in our situation is that we had so many coins uh, to offer people, but we really had no way of displaying them all so everyone could take a look. Um, and so we ended up catching ourselves in certain, in certain cycles, and we're going to be talking about uh, these cycles today. Uh, but let's start off with the Facebook and Instagram sellers, the cycles that they're in currently. Uh, you'd end up offering one coin uh, you know, on your Instagram page, showing a post, uh, making a, a price, everything else. And then you take up more time, um, it would either sell or it wouldn't sell. It would take 10 hours to sell, 3 days to sell, 2 weeks to sell. Um, and then you have to message someone for an invoice. And sometimes you work, you're working with many different payment options, Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. Um, there's just a whole slew of things that you have to work through and help someone pay. Um, and then you end up shipping that coin. And so that was the, the cycle we felt uh, ourselves were on for a, a long time but it felt like there was a lot of narrow things about it. Um, a few of the upsides about selling on Instagram and Facebook uh, was the more individualized approach. I could talk to them, I could film more videos for them, I could offer them more assistance, give them uh, tips, um, and uh, it was also easy to contact them. I knew their, their handle, I may know, have known their email, things like that. Um, a few downsides like I was talking about earlier, it's just narrow for them to view my inventory. Say they wanted that one coin for my Instagram sale, how are they going to see the rest of them? If I have 300 items out in the safe, how are they going to be able to see those? And how are we going to get, be able to get more customers to understand that I have that much inventory? Um, and, and so that ends up turning into it's hard to provide for many collectors because I end up selling one coin to somebody and then the rest of the people that were interested are completely turned off and are looking for other coins to buy. And so that's something that really caught our attention because we want to be people that uh, assist everybody that we can in terms of adding to their collection. And so we ended up creating another wheel. Um, the wheel that we use over here is this dealer scaling wheel. And basically what that means is that we either make an eBay store, which some people use, or we use a, a website. And the website that we've been using, you know, it's been Wix, but AcousticCollectibles.com. Go over there if you're interested in any of our coins. Um, and the way that helps us is that if you guys go onto our website, we can show you guys everything that we have. Um, we can also talk to you directly. There's just a lot of benefits to it, but when you look at the, the wheel that ends up taking a lot of time, um, the online store, many items are offered. So once I upload it once, it's on there forever until it gets sold. There's many sales that might happen. There might be someone that likes steel sense. There might be someone that likes Morgans. There might be somebody that likes bullion. Everything is on there. It's available and then whenever someone's interested and wants to buy it the invoice is automated either through uh, Wix payments or through PayPal so I don't have to work on and and help people get through that so that can be a little bit easier for me in terms of time savings and then uh, the ultimate goal is to ship out many items and so uh, the upsides of this um, in itself is that I can serve many people at once um, and many people can keep coming back to me uh, and understanding that I find certain things for them. 
There's been a cap bus guy that likes to buy a lot of cap bus. And there's been a guy that likes to buy tone stuff. So it's been a really interesting process to see how it's been all uh, unfolding. Um, and like I said, um, it was it's easier access for the seller and the buyer. All I do is take a few photos, upload it on there, or you guys can just go on there and click on and look at all the pictures and choose which way you want to pay. It's very simple. Um, the downsides, which we're trying to bridge currently, is the hard to reach, uh, hard to reach the dealer. Sometimes it's harder for me to get a hold of you um, because not everybody checks their emails or their messages on Wix, and it's less individualized. Um, you don't get that individualized attention, and so. The way that we're going to try to improve ourselves is that if we can bridge these upsides from Instagram and Facebook over and make them upsides for the dealer scaling wheel, it'll really help uh, us reach more people, help uh, people get more coins in their collection, um, and just understand that we're out there to help people. I think that um, the difference between these two scaling models is that this ends up saving you a lot of time, gives people a lot of availability, um, and it's long lasting. Um, and I feel like long term, uh, this is a fleeting kind of uh, wheel for you. You know, this we use this uh, this wheel for over a year, and it's been good. But the thing I don't want to be known for is that Instagram coin dealer. I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh yeah, you sell coins on Instagram. Oh yeah, you sell coins on Facebook. I want to be the guy that says, oh, you you have your own website. We can view all your inventory. Uh, you're very prepared for whatever needs that we might have. So that's all interesting things to understand in terms of uh, the different coin wheels. But the, the ultimate question and what you're probably thinking yourself is, how do you make this work? How do you bring people to your site? How do you, uh, how do you bring people to your eBay? And the ultimate answer to that is content. So the content aspect of uh, this wheel, which we didn't talk about in the first place, is are you providing value in the marketplace? Besides paying for ads like some other people do, are you using your passion of writing blogs, making content, um, maybe do it going on lives? Is there something that you enjoy that would add value to the numismatic space? Do you like to study varieties? Do you like to uh, work on type books? There's all different types of things that could add content, uh, give people value in the numismatic space, and not many people are doing it. And so. The way we made this work is that we used uh, my, my joy for making videos, my joy for uh, creating interesting content, and we implemented that in the wheel, and it's been working for us so far. There's been a lot of people that like to come over to the website, talk to us, uh, buy stuff from us, and it's been pretty uh, interesting to see how it's all panned out. But I hope this helps you guys um, reinvent your coin wheel. Uh, not, like I said, not everything looks the same. Uh, you guys might have different processes, different things that interest you um, in terms of making your, your coin business better. But the main contrast that I have between these two uh, wheels is that we're, we're using the same amount of time to do a lot more for a lot more people. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this whiteboard session. Uh, let's get back to the video. Here's an interesting coin which you don't buy every day. This is a 1944D over D repunch mint mark. And, uh, you know, it's got some interesting toning to it. Uh, not the most lustrous uh, surfaces because of that toning. Um, but when you flip it over, you're going to see this huge D on the coin. I mean, just look at that D. It's just, that's a big D. Uh, don't don't take it any further than that. Get your mind out of the gutter. But it's a big D, you know. And so uh, we thought it was an interesting piece. Uh, some people collect uh, varieties. And uh, this repunched re mint mark was something that we thought would be a unique piece for the shop. Um, and so, you know, sometimes it's a little bit rare to find uh, find a, a buyer for these. But like I said, when we have an opportunity to buy, we're going to buy. And this coin is a stunner in itself. For all my Merc guys out here, uh, this is it. Mint State 66, 1944D. Uh, there wasn't a repunch mint mark designation on this coin. But as you can tell, the surfaces are very nice on the coin. Uh, I love the luster on it. I think that it might have been a little bit undergraded as well, um, just because I don't see too many issues with the coin. Uh, maybe a little bit of chatter in the fields, but overall, I think the coin is a, is in phenomenal shape. And if you guys do see these price tags right here, it's because that's what we price them on the website for. So if $30 appeals to you, 
uh, run on over there and press the button and I'm, I'm over plugging here but just something I wanted to tell you guys so before we go into more graded stuff let's start talking about some raw stuff that we bought um, we've been buying raw stuff that's a little bit more rare to find um, including something like this this is an 1835 excuse the one there uh, cap bus quarter graded uh, I would say very fine plus um, as you can see there's a nice there's an interesting die crack here on the coin and there's not too many issues with it I think that PCGS or NGC would take good care of it and you see a lot of bus halves these days uh, those have been coming out of the woodwork um, but you don't see uh, bus bus quarters too often and so when I when I saw this at our buddy's house I'm like you know what I have to take a leap here I have to try something new I have to start putting more interesting stuff in the shop and so I bought this coin and it's just I love the character of it I love that it's not too beat and uh, over over uh, what would I say over dipped or someone put a harsh chemical on it I do think it's just a nice coin overall has that little bit of a darkness to it um, and like I said that die crack's pretty interesting as well speaking of capped stuff this is a capped dime that we just bought I think this one already sold which is crazy this coin is phenomenal. I mean, just look at the, the eye appeal of it uh, for a circulated coin. I think it's pretty unique. Um, someone else thought it was as well. I mean, and it's a problem-free example. I mean, just there's not many problems with this coin. And uh, I don't know, I love it. And the reason why I bought this coin is because it's another thing that's rare as well. How many times do you see a cat bus dime? Raw. That's this nice. Never. So that's something. that's the reason why we bought it. I think it's a, an extraordinary piece um, for the shop, and someone bought it super quick, and I don't blame them. So, if you guys want something like this, you know what to do. Here's a pretty little coin. This is an 1850 O. You can kind of see a little scratch here, but it's a 1850 O half dime. Um, it, it can, well, it's going back to that uh, the cap bust dime uh, look, a little bit of a darker, more eye appealing look there. Uh, hasn't been tampered with too much apart from that uh, looks like a staple scratch but uh, the reverse is pretty nice as well uh, really strong details for a, a circulated example sometimes you run into coins that are just so beat to death that people can't really tell you know what's going on with the coin and so this is a this is a coin that I like to buy because it, it's not too over it's not too much money but it also is something that gives someone a grasp on what the coin looked like in its original shape uh, even if it was circulated. And I apologize guys, this is going to be a longer video, but I do want I did want to share everything with you guys. It's important that we do. Um, we just love sharing great coins with you and I can't let these things not go not get filmed. Uh, you know, I just I was really happy with what we bought. But this is an 1831 cap bus quarter. We were just talking about these. Uh, this one has a little bit uh, you know, it's it's pretty light. I'm not sure what what someone might have done to it, but I think it's still, you know, a rather problem-free example. Uh, I rate this one very good. Uh, you know, I, like I said, uh, he had two of them there, and I bought both of them because um, it's just a it's just something that you can't can't find. Um, if you look up once now on eBay, they're going to be pr pretty pretty expensive, if they're even there at all. And so, uh, when you're moving into a new sector, like I said, try to find things that are rare. Try to find things that are. Uh, that are a little bit tougher to, to find for people and they you will be rewarded for it so this one actually sold on the website but the first one didn't so uh, you know people do enjoy rare type coins like this here's a 1876 CC uh, seated dime graded uh, very fine in my opinion uh, maybe it might be a fine but uh, it, overall, I don't think there's too many issues with the coin. Uh, it might have had some old cleaning to it, but that's what's customary about most of these coins. Um, they're just going to go through a little bit of a process where, you know, uh, a lot of things happen to them, but PCGS does recognize that, or NGC as well, and they do give some leniency just because of it. Um, we've done so many terrible things to our coins. Not us, but people in the past made chemicals, made uh, used wire brushes, and that's really taken away from their value. But things like this, I think, have a good shot at being uh, graded, graded straight and giving a numerical grade. This is a neat coin. I like this coin a lot. Uh, this is an 1853 uh, seated quarter. 
um, graded, uh, you know, I, I graded it fine. And I think that the, the obverse, there's an obverse scratch here, which kind of takes away a little bit from the value. But the cool thing about it is it's arrows and it's rays. I love the rays on here. It's just extremely nice detail. Um, it does have a few rim dings to it, which is a little bit of a downer. But overall, the coin is, uh, you know, something that I do like to pick up, something that I do like to try. Um, and if this just doesn't sell for a while, you know what? I'm okay with it. I just, I love the uniqueness of it. Um, I think that the coin, you know, you find a lot of them with arrows, you find a lot of them uh, without the rays, and this one has both, so that's pretty neat. Um, let me know what you guys think of this coin below. Um, is it worth it uh, for you guys? Um, I don't know, I think, I think your perspective is interesting, so let me know what you guys think below on this one. And just, just so you guys know, okay, when this video airs, there's going to be like 50 raw Morgan dollars that I'm going to be putting on the website, all for a decent price, better dates, common date BU stuff. You're going to not want to miss out on that, but this is an 1887 Morgan dollar uh, mint state coin. I'm going to be shooting through these quickly, actually. Set that one down. And got this really nice problem-free almost 1884S. Not too many issues with it. Uh, details are very nice on the coin. Uh, just not, it doesn't look clean either, which is interesting. 1883S, you know, common date stuff here for you guys' enjoyment. I did not pay $20, I paid a little bit more than that, but uh, you guys could be getting this one for a cheap price on there. Let me just pick up a whole group here. <laughs> so, 1900S, look at that. 1888S, tougher date for sure. 1896S, tough date as well. 1886O. That's pretty tough date. Has some cleaning on it, but that's to be expected. 1886S, 1885S, 1883S. So we bought a lot of nice raw coins from them, and this is only half the pile. So let me show you guys the rest. You guys are gonna think I'm nuts, which I am nuts. You know, it's 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 a part of the game. You know, uh, it's the 1896O, 1904O. Um, this one's BU, as you can see. 1892s that's a tough date 94s a pretty tough date as well a 1901 a little bit of a nice hole filler uh there is a rim ding on it but other than that not too many issues a 92 uh, overall a nice example uh 28s 35s and then we're going to break down a little bit more of these coins here uh this is a interesting little wood grained uh, 1902 uh, Indian head scent, I graded very fine. I liked it because of its character. Took a little risk on it. Here's something that you don't see every day, which uh, you guys are going to have a shot at as well. This is um, an 1812 uh, cap bust half dollar. Um, it does have a, a light scratch here. Um, and it's just, I mean, I, I like the originality of the coin. I think it's, you know, it, it's been through a lot, but overall, I think the coin uh, would be a nice hole filler. It's a nice early date example, and, you know, just wow. I like the coin. It's, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't messed with too many cap bus uh, halves, but with this one, I didn't mind taking a risk on. So, you guys thought we were done with graded stuff? Oh, no way or not. We got a whole bunch of stuff to show you guys, but let me just, let me pick out a few that are really nice just so uh, we can show you everything that uh, that we got and not take up too much more of you guys' time. Uh, we actually ended up walking into our friend's house and I was like, you know what, I don't need this 32S and 32D quarter that, that he has because I, don't, I already have two in the shop. And then when I was sitting there, two of them sold, both of them in the same order that I had on the website. So I ended up buying these, which is a nice, nice addition to uh, the website. This is a 1932D Washington quarter. Graded uh, good for by uh, PCGS. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a decent coin. Nothing to scream uh, home about. Um, but, you know, if you're a asking for a low ball example, something to fill the, the set for under 100 bucks, this coin is something for you. Um, just something that I had to pick up. I thought someone would enjoy it. We've been on a little Buffalo kick lately. So I, I bought this 1926. Uh, Buffalo uh, nickel, uh, you know, there's no distracting spots about the coin. It's graded MS63. You know, it's a middle of the road coin. You're filling up a set. You want to uh, buy things that are more affordable and then build on top of it. 
this coin is for you. Um, you know, I think that the coin overall has nice eye appeal. Um, it's just whenever you think of a buffalo nickel, this is exactly what you think of it. Uh, you know, no toning, um, decent luster on it, and uh, you know, I love the design overall. And it's but it's just super hard to grade. So um, you guys take take this coin as you will. Um, but let me show you guys just a few more. We ended up buying a lot of Walker's from, but the most memorable one for me is this 1941. Uh, it was graded mint state 66 by PCGS. A little bit of a higher grade here, as you can see. You know, I like the luster of the coin overall. Uh, I haven't really bought a, uh, too many walkers as of lately, but when this one came up, had to take a shot at it. I love the coin. And when we're taking leaps and buying new things, like we were discussing earlier in the video, uh, we ended up buying. Uh, some coins we don't normally buy. So this is an 1865 uh, 3 cent nickel. Mint State 62 by PCGS. You know, uh, something that that we thought was interesting on it. So we we actually ended up buying a lot of 3 cent pieces. But we didn't buy a lot of 3 cent nickels. So we ended up buying some 3 cent nickels to uh, show you guys and share with you. Um, so, uh, you know, you got to get your feet wet sometimes. You got to try something new. You got to offer more things. Um, because there's going to be a lot of people that come to you if you're a coin dealer uh, asking you for certain things and you got to have them. And if you don't have them, they're going to be looking for somebody else that does. So we're talking about the 32D. This is the 32S that we purchased from our friend. Uh, a lot better uh, of detail than the previous 32S that we had. I think it was an XF40. So this one's an AU53. Uh, still some nice remaining luster on it. It's a better AU coin. And it has some actually interesting toning on the reverse as well, which you don't see every day. Um, but, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with key date quarters. That's why we jumped into this series. Last but not least, this is, uh, we've been buying a lot of commemoratives. We've been talking to you guys a lot about commemoratives. But this is a commemorative we don't normally buy. This coin is graded MS62 by PCGS. Has like a little bit of a gold or a greenish hue to it, I think. It's an interesting coin overall. I love that it has Ohio on it because your boy is from Ohio. White boy, white boy. Um, but he's from Niles, Ohio, which is his birthplace. Um, and it was made in 1916. And the detail on the coin is very nice. Um, it is a bit of a smaller piece, so it is a little bit harder to see for you guys. Um, but we do try to take a little bit better photos on the website. So if you guys want to do take, go over there and take a look, you can. Um, but thank you guys for watching this part of the video for us. Uh, we're just so excited about everything that's coming down the pike. And we uh, we want you guys to stick around as, as long as possible. So <clears throat> thank you guys for watching the video so far. Um, let's roll to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy our video, Please leave a like. It supports our dream. You want to comment your thoughts? We like your thoughts. What do you think about the coins? What do you think about what we had to say? And subscribe. You gotta join the community. We're just, I mean, we're the best ones on here, let's be honest. And why do you want to subscribe? You don't want to miss an episode. I mean, we got great coins coming out, great information as a dealer coming out. Do all those things, and we'll see you in the next episode.